revenge. Revenge comes in many flavors and many shapes. And sometimes the most fitting shape of all is the phallic one, drawn in furious detail on every margin covered with fairy notes. Indeed, poor Omicron was the first to go down, though I did hope that defacing fairy's work would be a nice little jab under the damn mage's ribs as well. Fine, I'll admit, I wasn't partial to summoning an inverse pig. But a wild bandit? Who knows? Wild bandit could turn out to be a hunk. A brother, though. Useless. What was I supposed to do with a brother? Karin sat opposite me with furred brow, watching me draw dicks in the book. We talked a little bit over a cup of stewed fruit and it looked like we'd need a bunch more servings to cover everything. He'd been looking for me for a good few years, ever since he'd found out that he had an older sister. It became his quest to find me and finally have a family member who didn't aspire to become a sacrifice to one imaginary god or another. Which his, well, our, parents apparently did. You are lucky they gave you away, he said, taking a solid sip of the juice. Do you know why they did that anyhow? I asked. No idea. Money? Travelling? Deal with some devil or another? He shrugged. There was a lot to unpack here, but after the wedding and the weaving and the ritual, I didn't have enough brain power left to unseal more life boxes right now. So I focused on the one thing that resonated through everything Karin had said. He was here to stay. Now look, I know you might expect me to be more excited about finding a lost family member, failed ritual or not, but the thing is... I'd pretty much been raised by an entirety of Foxfen. I had family for days, uncles, aunts, cousins, and Rallis, of course, my official, if not biological, sister. I even had a red mother that was next on my revenge list. One brother, more or less, didn't make that much of a difference to me. And I had never had any need to find my roots. Being a citizen of Foxfen was an identity so robust it left no room for any holes to fill. Karin smartly waited until my pen stopped digging angrily ten pages deep into the book, which hinted at the dissolution of my fury, before asking again. So, who did you expect to summon if not me? The obvious thing to do here would be to make up a lie. Any would do, really. But in the spirit of glimmering regrets, instead, I told the truth. Of, of course, before Karen could begin to judge me, I made sure to add all the information about Mrs. Conba's curse and my string of hopeless relationships, which could inspire a depressed playwright to write the most heartfelt tragedy of his career. <laughs> and that's why I'm signing Ferry's name under all of his notes. I pointed towards the many phalluses I'd produced in the Omicron. Now the revenge on Ferry might have to wait, mostly because I don't know where he is, but Mrs. Konpa is right here. And I've had enough, brother. I've had just about enough. The look on Karen's face was a delightful reflection of an inner struggle. Is my sister insane? Should I be afraid? But she's my sister. I have to support her. Right? Right? Oh, come on. I'm not going to kill her. I waved my hand. I'll just make her suffer. A little. She deserves it, you know. This whole ritual thing? Well, that was my plan C. I didn't want to have to summon myself a man, believe it or not. But I ran out of solutions. Well... Aside of plan Z. Z. Oh, yes. Z. It's so bad it skipped the rest of the alphabet. Actually, pretty sure it's so bad even the curse won't want to touch it. Well, what is it? 
Lucas in the gossip now. He'll fit right in with us. <sighs> no. Is it time? Is it really time to say it out loud? No, it can't be, not yet, not like this. <sighs> no. Is it time? Is it really time to say it out loud? It can't be. Not yet, not like this. <sighs> I'm dead tired and you look woozy too. Let me set you up in the pantry, I said. My grand family had also taught me to never leave our own behind, even if it meant stuffing them between pickle jars and feeding them the contents. Trust me, that's the closest to a guest room you will find here. Tomorrow we'll figure out what to do with you next. Karin raised the leg of his pants to scratch his shin and... There it was. The red splotchy birthmark that Raleigh's always joked was the result of my mother getting barfed on by a dog when she was pregnant. If I had any plans to doubt Karin's words or to come up with a crazy twist that proved he was wrong and I had, in fact, summoned my soulmate or whatever. Yeah, those plans were done for. Ruined. Destroyed, eradicated. He was my flesh, my blood, and my dog barf shin. Karen the Kind gave me a fair warning when we woke up the next day and tossed the pantry looking for something decent to eat, he said. Sure. I could promise not to tell anyone who I am for now, but I won't be able to keep my word here. Not for the lack of trying, but for the lack of... lack of excitement. I can take your Omicron magic pet link to my grave, but this... sorry. Well, with things put this way, what choice did I have? We made up a story as made up as they come, and we announced to the whole of Foxpen that here he is, my long-lost brother who drove on a train through the night, then waddled through the bog wrestling all the beavers that dared stand in his way until he finally arrived at my door and knocked and knocked and knocked until the knocking knocked me out of my drunken stupor and I opened the door to see him. Well, something like that. You know, I was thinking yesterday, I began to muse aloud as we came back to my place after visiting Karin's new abode. Sometimes the universe plotted things so perfectly, it was a tough ask to not believe in destiny. Remember when I told you about Lania? Our undertaker, who eloped with the pearl merchant, leaving poor Andy alone and broken-hearted. Well, guess what? That meant a job opening. <laughs> and who's better to fill it than my new brother with the oh-so-fitting name? Karen himself was less amused by the poetic irony orchestrated by the universe, but he couldn't turn his back on the offer. Having slept in my pantry, he knew there was no way he could mooch off me for long. I was the resident mooch, and there wasn't room for two. Yeah? Karyon nudged me to continue. If I wanted to use Omicon to get my revenge on Mrs. Konba, should I ask for something good for her and then it would turn out foul? No offense. Or would it smell my intent and actually do what the spell promised? Are you serious? Karin stopped and grabbed me by the shoulder to turn me right around to face him. You're not using the book again. I wasn't joking about the trouble you could get in. Well, yes, but this time I actually would want some trouble to happen. I mean, maybe even an inverse pick could do. I grinned, but Karin's scowl got so strong it punched that grin off my face. Erini, I mean it. It may seem all funny, but the book has the power to summon a person to another place. Do you understand what it means? Yes? He rolled his eyes. Where did you put it? 
he asked, but then he spotted Omicron still lying innocently on the table. He grabbed it and headed straight for the closet with a key in the doors. He shoved the book in, locked the door and ripped the key out. I'll hold on to this, he said. I'm sorry, I don't want to be bossy, but this is a matter of your safety and I don't care. I walked over to the closet and gave it a gentle kick. The door opened with a pathetic creak. Carrion puffed up. God's fine, I raised my hands defensively. I won't use it. I straightened the closet's legs to help it regain its equilibrium. Probably, I mouthed as Carrion foolishly turned around to peek out the window.